show you the problem for Quest. I'll pop it up on the screen right now. You can pause it. Okay, so now you've seen the problem. Now you'll notice that they have given you some given. So H, D, and data. Now, so I'm gonna draw the problem out. This always helps uh, despite whatever topic you're doing. So it's a 2D motion problem with a projectile, right? <clears throat> so it's gonna be traveling at some speed V naught with some angle theta with respect to the horizontal. And then it says it travels a horizontal distance B until it hits some tree at some height H. And it wants to find out what is tangent of theta. So an initial incorrect thought would be to assume, well, that's the uh, opposite. This is the adjacent. So tangent of theta is just going to be opposite over adjacent, which is actually wrong. And then mathematically, this is why it's going to be wrong. So first, I'm going to break out the xy chart. And I'm going to establish my given. So in the y acceleration is negative g. The x acceleration is zero. V naught in the y is going to be, you're going to break this thing up into its components. So this is the x component. This is the y component. And we notice the y component is the opposite side. So we're going to be dealing with sine, right? So V naught sine theta is going to be the component in the y for the initial velocity. And then for the x, this is dealing with the adjacent. So it's going to be V naught cosine theta. Right now, so what can we do here? So we know delta y because of your kinematics equations, right? Look in your equation sheet is equal to one half at squared plus v naught t. So plugging in our values here, I'm gonna write v naught t in front because this is gonna become a negative term because of the negative g. So v naught t, v naught sine theta t, and then minus one half g t squared, right? Because we, the acceleration is negative g. So I, just, I don't like leading with a negative. I just put it right here. So I don't lose my negative or flip the sign uh, incorrectly. And then in the x, we know delta x is equal to 1 half a t squared plus v naught t. Since acceleration is zero, this whole term goes away and we're just left with d, uh, delta x is equal to v naught t. And then we substitute in our value for v naught t. I mean v naught. So that's v naught cosine theta t for delta x. And we were also given that it travels a horizontal distance b so delta x is really equal to b as well and then so we plug in b for delta x equal to v naught cosine theta t and then this is lynn's train of thought she actually worked the problem out before me but i'll let her do the math i'm just doing the setup she solves for time here v naught cosine theta t and there's one more equation that is needed to solve this problem that is the range equation. So uh, I'm just gonna write it down here, cut off right there. So range is equal to the maximum distance a projectile follows for a ground to ground problem is V naught squared sine two theta over G. Now this, its motion terminates halfway through the actual range. So this, in the context of this problem, the horizontal at distance is really Delta x is equal to range over 2. So if you plug in a 2 here, the range of this thing, or rather delta x, is going to be v naught squared sine 2 theta over 2g, right? Divided by 2 because it terminates halfway. And if you expand this trig identity, you're going to be left with delta x is equal to v naught squared 2 sine theta cosine theta over 2g. You can divide out, divide out the twos and <laughs> you're going to be left with v naught squared sine theta cosine theta is equal to g. So now you have all the equations you need to solve this thing. So I'm kind of bad at math so I'm going to give it to Liz. <laughs> <laughs> So whenever we're gonna cut everything right this side, so to make it neat, cause I'm not like him, so. Uh, right here, the delta x will equal to v, what? Delta x.
x is equal b not square sine beta cosine beta all over g and now we always know the delta y equal b not psi beta t minus one and a half g t squared but beware the delta eight delta y right here will be h so i'll just clean out that'll be the h and delta x will be the b okay and then we're going to plugging everything in and then there's a t equal b over b not cosine theta so that's a major equation, and those two just help you to like solve for the equation. So we're gonna plug it in. So h will equal to v naught sine theta, and times the b v naught cosine theta, v over v naught cosine theta. Ah, okay, it's okay, it's okay. And then minus one and a half g times v over v naught cosine theta square okay i know it's too big but i'll go yeah, clean out everything yeah, right here yeah, and you guys kind of pause it and to see whatever yeah, before see where the work is okay so now right here the h whenever the sine over cosine this um tangent right and the v naught right here could be canceled out so v naught's canceled and that'll be v tangent data and go to this side, it's a minus one and a half g, which is a b squared over b naught squared cosine squared theta. Don't forget to the square to the cosine, otherwise you'll get it wrong. And then we'll have to pull the b out because at that question, there has an h and then b and then the 10 data, right? So we can't get rid of every b. Otherwise, all the B's gone, the answer choice is not going to be there. So now, we have to pull the B out. That would be H equal B squared 10 data minus G B over 2 V naught squared cosine squared theta. So you just move the fraction to the bottom. Yeah, that's the fraction. Okay. G's on the top, 2 on the bottom, right? Okay, because this is the 1 and a half. Now, we we'll have to, okay, I'll do individual part so people won't get lost. I get this one out. So right here, GB, and right here, I'll pull it down to here. So it's G times V naught squared sine theta, cosine theta over G, that's B. And divided by that number, will be multiplying by one over to V naught squared cosine squared theta. She's plugging in for B, and she's just writing it, so it's mm -hmm. I know. Okay, so now G is canceled and V naught square is canceled and one of the cosine will be canceled right here. Right? Okay, right? So now we only get sine data to cosine data as a bottom left over. And sine data divided by cosine data, that will be a tangent. So it will be one and a half ten data. And then we have to move everything back to the original and then we're going to move this down. So that would be H equal B 10 data minus this thing right here. I don't think I can do it. I need it. Sure. Yeah. So H right here, because right here there's a one in front of it. So one minus one and a half, that would be one and a half, right? So it would be B times one and a half. 10 data. Okay, never mind. I need this. <laughs> bye bye. A hard work. I know. Ugh. I hope Mr. Foster Room can always be clean. <laughs> anyway, so I gotta move this up. H equal B times one half 10 data. So now we'll have to get 10 in another side and everything else in another side. So that would be. Why? Okay, let's do this. H divided by B in both sides, right? So it would be H over B equal one and a half ten data. And now divided by one and a half will be multiplied by two, right? 
So that would be 2H over B equal 10 data. Ooh, the answer will be there. Yeah, so that's the answer. So it's not actually H over B, yep. which was what I initially thought. But That's right. so what he thought. And I was like, ha ha, you got it wrong. <laughs> so 27. Do the range problem. Yeah. Post everything the, Everything else is math. Post the range one. Okay, Find equation. Solve for the equation. Okay, sure. Yeah, I'll yeah. do. Okay, so 27. So now we have a, we have a new set of gibbons here. So if we draw from our previous section of the powerful equations, we now have this under a belt. We now also have all of this. We also have B over B naught cosine theta equal to T. And last but not least, we have this e naught squared sine theta cosine theta over g so now they want us to solve for v naught in terms of h b and g so no trig functions in there so this is straight up all math so we need to basically redraw our picture to get a kind of a visual on what's going on because this is important so basically the displacement is going to look something like this the x component the y component and then the true displacement right here so this is going to be b and now what we found out that it's actually 2h not h and we have this displacement vector here let's just call it s so Let's hit the rewind button here and start from the beginning. So delta y is equal to v naught sine theta t minus one half g t squared. Plugging in for t. Put the data so they can now visualize data. Yeah, there's a data in there. Data. No, put a data in the angle. Oh, fine. Yeah, sure. Okay. Data. Ah. And then b over v naught cosine theta, I just substitute in this in for t, minus 1 half g, b over v naught cosine theta squared. And then there's a v naught here, v naught here, those go away. Tan uh, sine over cosine is just tangent. So tangent of theta, b minus 1 half, okay. So g, and then I'm going to square the v then square the v-naught, and square the cosine theta, right? So what can we do from here? Now we have this, and we have the tan theta right here. So I'm gonna plug this in to tan theta. Okay. Ooh. 2h over b, b minus 1 half g, b squared over v-naught squared cosine squared theta. And also, in our previous equation, this delta y became a h, so I'm gonna throw that in here real quick as well, right? Because we said our original equation was h is equal to all this garbage, right? So there's a b here, there's a b here. Those go away, you can divide it out, right? Minus, and I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. So g b squared over, I'm gonna put the two in the bottom, multiplying by one half, the two goes into the denominator cosine squared theta. And then I'm gonna subtract two h from both sides. So one minus two, negative h is equal to negative g b squared over two v naught squared cosine squared theta. So there's a negative one here and a negative one here, we can divide those out. So we get h is equal to g b squared over two v naught squared cosine squared theta. So we're almost there. We just have this one annoying trig function left, so I'm going to clean it up a little. I'm going to isolate the v naught squared. I'm going to multiply by 1 over v naught squared. 1 over v naught squared. No, actually, multiply by just straight up v naught squared. So if I multiply by v naught squared here, this becomes v naught squared h is equal to 2gb over 2 cosine squared theta. And then I'm going to divide by h. So g b squared over 2 h cosine squared theta. Now this is the critical part. What I'm going to actually do, I'm going to rewrite this fraction 
as gb squared over 2h multiplying the reciprocal of cosine squared theta. Right, this is on the bottom, so I can just move it out here and write it as a reciprocal. So now we need to consider, what is cosine of theta? Well, that is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, right? Basic geometry right there. So we can identify our adjacent side to be B, and our hypotenuse is some this displacement S. We don't know what it is, so we're going to solve for it right now. If you notice, when you break up a vector into components, the x and y components are going to be perpendicular to each other. So you can use Pythagorean theorem to say that the hypotenuse squared is equal to one of the legs squared plus the other leg squared, right? Just Pythagorean theorem, nothing fancy there. And so if you carry out the squared for the y component, 4h squared, and then take the square root of both sides. S is nothing but the square root b squared plus 4h squared. You can't actually take out the square root because order of operations won't let you pull out these two things and separate them into two radicals. That's not how it works. So now we have S, we're gonna plug it in here. So cosine of theta is nothing but b over the square root b squared plus 4h squared. If I take the reciprocal of both sides, 1 over cosine theta, so reciprocal, you just flip this, b squared plus 4h squared over b. Then I square both sides, so 1 squared is just 1. Cosine squared theta, square this so the radical goes away, and then square the bottom, which is b squared. Now we have an expression for the reciprocal of cosine squared theta. So we can plug it in here. And then you get gb squared over 2h is equal to, uh, to multiplying by the reciprocal of cosine squared, which is equal to this, right? So b squared plus 4h squared over 2b squared. If we multiply this out, we get b naught squared is equal to 2gb squared, uh, b squared plus 4h squared over 2h b squared. So there's a b squared here and a b squared here. Can you can divide this out. And we're basically there. Take the square root of both sides. We get v naught is the square root of g times b squared plus 4h squared over 2h. <laughs> <laughs> that is the math. For 27, so it's just straight up math and a basic. This is the critical part. This equation basically saves us because if not, we're just left with this secant squared data right there, right? So basically just recalling that the X and Y are perpendicular to each other and the true displacement is gonna be uh, the hypotenuse and then just plug it in and then doing some math. So that's 27. Yeah, people always stats. <laughs> People in stats.